Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper, and this, well, it's Tony Hager, and welcome to Global Wrestling News. The annual kickoff to the collegiate wrestling season takes place November 1st in Atlanta, Georgia, at Georgia Tech's new McCamish Pavilion. New because they've recently remodeled. It's gorgeous. Most recently, the Wrestlers and Business Network announced that returning NCAA champ Cody Brewer would bump up to 141 pounds to take on Oklahoma State's Dean Heil. Should Brewer consider a move up to 141? I mean, Brewer was massive at 133 pounds, so it wouldn't shock me, but I, I never heard any rumblings of him having issues getting to 133. He has come out and said that he will go down this year, or he plans to, so I really think that uh, this is just his transition to get down there. I mean, and also, if he, if he does really well at the 140 pound weight class, he might just stay there, because that's going to be a solid weight for him, too. Is 141, in your opinion, between 33 and 41, is 41 a weaker weight class? I think 100% I would go to 141 if I was Cody Brewer, but you know, I'm not in that room. I don't know how his nutrition is, but uh, you know, if, if, if he can be successful at 141 at the All-Star Classic against uh, Oki State rival, I think you, you end up maybe seeing him stay at 141. All right, Tony, I happen to agree with you, 33 to 41, 41 may be a little less tough. Cody Brewer is going to be tough no matter where he is. Look for him at the All-Star Classic, and you can get tickets. Join us at very special Sunday, November 1st, as we kick off the season. Look for tickets at the address you see on your screen. Well, the University of Iowa has taken a bold step to break the standing attendance record when they face the Cowboys of Oklahoma State outdoors at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City. To date, they've sold a record 21,000 seats, and that number could easily double by November. Tony, it's a concept that's been met with mixed emotions from both the fan base and the media. What are your thoughts? I mean, uh, the weather is the biggest issue. That's constantly being talked about and uh, I think uh, that is a, obviously a good concern for maybe parents and uh, people at the university have but they wouldn't do it or announce they're gonna do it if they thought it could work out and you know whether cold or warm I think people are gonna show up for it there I mean obviously there's almost 25,000 tickets sold um, from what I've heard and um, you know, as far as the weather goes, we have experts for that that can maybe tell us what uh, what's going to be predicted. Experts, we do indeed. Will the weather be a problem for the grapple on the gridiron? Joining us now for a historical look back at weather patterns, and I look forward to this year's event. National Severe Storms Long Range Forecaster from the Weather Bell is Joe Bastardi. Jojo, how are you? Oh, pretty well. How are you? What are the mid-November historical facts on weather for the state of Iowa? Well, I was a uh, pretty chilly place. I mean, especially if you're coming from Oklahoma. Of course, if you're from Winnipeg, it's not quite as chilly. Uh, at that time of the year, normal highs are in the upper 40s, normal lows in the low to mid 30s. Uh, so it's not like you're going to be wrestling in Carver Hawkeye on that day. Well, Joe, over 21,000 wrestling fans will gather that special day in November. How should they be prepared? Well, you've got to get closer to see exactly what's going on. Keep in mind that uh, on some November 14th, it's been as warm as 62, 63 uh, there, and it's been as cold as 20s with snow in the air. So uh, there is variance that is involved here. Uh, my gut feeling is it's going to be a bit chillier than normal at that time. Uh, it's impossible for me to say, well, if there's a storm going by at that time or whatever uh, from this far away. But uh, I would definitely think that you're going to be uh, – Let's put it this way. You dress for an Iowa football game. How's that? Joe, you're a long-standing Penn State fan, and the Nittany Lions currently hold the record for attendance. What would you recommend that Cale Sanderson do to attempt an event like this at Happy Valley? Uh, I guess if he wants to break the uh, gimmick record, <laughs> you know, get a hold of Cornell and wrestle them next year, except uh, I'd advise Kale because I know him real well. I'd say, hey, well, just uh, you know, open the season up early, the first week of October, when you don't have to worry about snowstorms and things like that. But I, I mean, this whole thing, and maybe I'm just you know an old fuddy duddy over here. I think wrestling stands on the purity of itself. It doesn't need uh, you know something like this. So I'm sort of biased against it a little bit. And uh, you know, in a in a regular wrestling venue. Uh, you know, no matter what happens outside over here, uh, Penn State's still going to hold the record. So, you know, th th those kind of things are like arguing over how many angels you can stick on the head of the needle. Uh, generally, it doesn't make any difference. Wrestling fans, you can look for Joe Bastardi on the Sean Hannity Show and online at theweatherbell.com. Joe, appreciate the time. Well, Scott, you enjoy the weather and your wrestling because they're the only weather and wrestling you've got. 
All right, wrestling fans, we've got a lot more to talk about, so stay tuned. You're watching Global Wrestling News. All right, welcome back. It's recently been announced that Anthony Valencia will be taking Olympic red shirt. What are his chances of making an Olympic team? I, I mean, I, I think that this is really just a, a reason to maybe get another year at Arizona State. I don't think that he has a chance of, based off what happened up in uh, Madison, I don't think he has a real shot of actually making the team. Well, the Valencia brothers, of course, are going to help the Arizona State squad. How long will it take for Arizona State to actually become a top tier team? I mean, we've got to look at this year as a red shirt year for that huge class that came in. Um, I think it's going to take two, three years to get a solid, you know, a lineup to, to take down the likes of Penn State, Ohio State, Iowa, uh, Missouri. I mean, they, those guys have had a program for a really long time. So has Arizona State, but they didn't have Zeke Jones at the helm. and He hasn't been bringing in the talent for the last five years. He really just started last year bringing these guys in. So. Give it two, three years before we see maybe a top five finish. I don't know, Zeke Jones, a miracle worker for sure. Who has the best chances out of all the Olympic red shirts to make the team? I think really the only one that has a shot at freestyle is going to be Kyle Snyder. Won the world championships, hard to argue that. You know, there's a few others that could uh, maybe slip in the lineup at the Greco. I, I think there are some holes there. Yeah, Jesse Thilke, you know, it just kind of depends on if, if Mango can have a hold on that weight class. So maybe look for Jesse to uh, fill a hole there at Greco. And, uh, you know, there's, there's other guys out there that could maybe, if they decide to switch from freestyle to Greco, they might have a shot on the world team. But uh, I, I just, uh, we'll see. All right, speaking of athletes that have a shot at making the Greco team, Kyvin Gadsden spent a week in a Colorado Springs training with Matt Lindley. Should he go Greco? I mean, 97 kilograms is just brutal, Scott. I mean, I mean he has to... He has to do what he did in folk style at the NCAA championships to to beat Kyle Snyder. You know, he he has that win in folk style, but freestyle is a whole different game. I mean, Gatson is built for Greco. I mean, you can see his long arms, his upper body is just massive, kind of like Snyder. But I think he might be a little bigger than uh, Snyder. And I know that uh, Gatson has had some success at the Greco level in high school. So. Uh, training with Matt Lennon, that, there's got to be a reason why he's uh, entertaining that uh, style of wrestling. Exploring all options is Kyvin Gadsden, Kyle Snyder, firmly focused on freestyle, and you got to understand that he is a world champ, the youngest being at 19 years old. Well, last weekend, former Olympian and UFC champ Daniel Cormier had his first title defense against Alexander Gustafson. With this, should we expect to see a rematch between Cormier and the only opponent to beat him? That's, of course, John Jones. Are we going to see a different Daniel Cormier this time around? Opinion? He's going to have to to beat John Jones. He's going to have to out-wrestle him. I mean, last time, there was really one good takedown that uh, Dan got, and uh, Jones obviously had a few of his own to win the match. But uh, if, if he has the same mindset and the same game plan to beat John Jones this time, it's just not going to happen. He's going to have to to try to get it on the mat and, and not stand up with John Jones. Would John Jones have the same success in wrestling that he's had in mixed martial arts? You know, junior college champ. A junior college champ. I, I think he could have done the same thing at the you know D1 level or any other level. I mean, he recruited by Cal Sanderson for Iowa State, sent to Fort Dodge, Iowa, to wrestle for the Tritons. Right. I mean, a tall and lanky wrestler. He he could be somebody that could be possibly on the world team. I just it's a shame that at the time that John Jones got into the sport of MMA. You know, wrestling was wasn't where it was as far as what we're paying athletes. So I mean, I don't. You know, fault him for going the MMA route because obviously he's had success for it. You know, but uh, you know that would be a great conversation to have with John Jones if he's ever thought about trying to make the Olympic team. Well, one man who knows Daniel Cormier well is the newly appointed director of public relations for Titan Mercury, and that's Craig Sesker, and he's joining us here today. Craig, let's talk a little bit about John Jones and Daniel Cormier. I think it'd be awesome. I think it'd be a great fight. I, I watched the first fight. I, you know, I thought Daniel really held his own very well the first three rounds. And I think, you know, some of Daniel's fights have ended pretty quickly. You know, and I think maybe conditioning was a little bit of a factor. You know, John Jones is almost 10 years younger. And Daniel is is really, you know, he's a, he was a great wrestler, obviously, world bronze medalist, two-time Olympian. But he is a very good MMA fighter. He can really punch and he can strike and he can kick. 
and he could mix it up. And the Gustafson fight, which was phenomenal, you know, and people forget that Alex Gustafson almost beat John Jones, and that was probably John Jones' toughest fight. And it was a great fight. Daniel did a great job of punching. He did an incredible takedown where he lifted him and planted him on the mat. And, you know, and, you know, I wish all the best for John Jones. You know, he was, a, he was a great wrestler as well, junior college national champion at Iowa Central. And I think it'd be a great fight. You got Daniel, plus he's very uh, well-spoken and, and, you know, he can really hype a fight, you know, and obviously he and John have a little bit of bad blood, et cetera, et cetera. But, I just think it would be a phenomenal fight. And I think, you know, I think you'll see a different Cormier this time. I think, I think Daniel has a legitimate shot to beat John Jones. I think there's no doubt about it. How has Daniel changed since his wrestling career ended? He's really grown as a person. He was always a very likable, very nice guy. Always very well-spoken. Always represented himself very well. He always competed hard. You know, he, he had he had a few issues with, you know, with managing his weight, which were pretty well documented, but he's really grown and matured. You know, he's making 205 pretty comfortably now. And that a lot of that's maturity. You know, a lot of that's he has, you know, a nutritionist. He has, like, someone that prepares his meals. And, you know, he's just he's really focused. And I think he's really developed a heck of a work, work ethic, you know, where he trains in uh, San Jose. You know, he trains with, with Cain Velasquez, who was a former heavyweight champion of the UFC. And, um, he's in a really good club and he, he's just, a he's a super person. You know, he, I have a close relationship with him and, you know, he hasn't forgotten where he comes, where he came from. He loves wrestling. He, you know, he always, uh, supports the sport and he watches, you know, he was watching all the matches from the world championships, uh, on TV and on the internet. Cause he was during his training camp, but I'm sure he was watching every chance chance he got and he's one of the biggest supporters of, of wrestling in the MMA. Well I guess it's been Craig Seska, the new PR director for Titan Mercury Wrestling Club. Craig, again, thanks for the time. We'll talk to you again real soon. Thank you. Wrestling fans stay tuned. We got a lot more to talk about. The news continues and Wayne Boyd's coming up, so you're watching Global Wrestling News. All right, welcome back. With his unique style, it's time for this week's edition of As I See It with our very own Hollywood Wayne Boy. Thanks, Scott. We're having a beautiful sunny day here in California. I'm wearing my Kyle Snyder t-shirt. I'm very proud of this young man, 19 years old, youngest American to ever win a world title. Now, all of a sudden, what are we going to do with him next? How's he going to train? Where is he going to go? Well, obviously, he's doing a pretty good job, however he was doing it, to win a world championship. But keep in mind, he's just out of high school, one year in college, finishes second in the nation, which brings us to probably his last loss against Gatson of Iowa State. There's some rumblings. Gatson is coming out for the Olympic trials. But Kyle Snyder shouldn't change his direction. Just keep doing what you're doing. And, and Jake Varner's got to be saying, gee, I lost to a 19-year-old kid. How did that happen? Well, it happened because this kid is a phenom. He's tremendous. But at the same time, Jake Varner's got to be saying, but he won the world championship. Jake Varner could still be the second best wrestler in America. So let's keep Kyle Snyder going. Let's, let's kind of whatever he was doing is working. Let's keep it up, add something to it. That kid is smart. He's probably the smartest kid about what he's doing to get ready for every match. Back to you, Scott. You know, Kyle Snyder, his point, you know, he's got his own t-shirt. I, I want one of those t-shirts. So hopefully, you know, we can, they can send us one. I don't know. We have to ask. Well, let's see if we get you a t-shirt. All right. Is that what it all weighs on right I now? I want the, the balance? You yep. want the t-shirt. All right. Well, thank you, Wayne Boyd. We appreciate it. News now out of Minnesota. Five-time Minnesota State Champ Mark Hall has committed to us and others that will be making his collegiate decision November 11th. What kind of immediate impact can he have on a program? He, he changed the game for just the college scene, but he's going to be impactful for freestyle in the future. I mean, he, he on that level, that's where he has made his name. Five-time state champ at Minnesota, going for his six, never been done. But I, I think to have him for that college season and then after, 
to build that wrestling club. We've just seen that the Hawkeye Wrestling Club have gotten tons of recruits because they got Ramos and Metcalf. So recruiting is now not only just for the college season, it's for their future after. All right, so where is it going? I, Big Ten school for sure. I mean, that, that's pretty easy for me wow. to answer that. But I think you know he's going to stay home at Minnesota or we could possibly see him at Ohio State. I didn't know if I could get you to commit or not. Speaking of commitments, the presidential race is in full swing, and once again, wrestling finds itself in the mix of the campaign. Well, one campaign in particular, Republican frontrunner Donald Trump has made it no secret that he loves the sport of wrestling and his long admired Olympic gold medalist and record-setting coach, Dan Gable. Wednesday, the two finally met in Waterloo, Iowa at the airport, fitting perhaps as the birthplace of the legendary one. Tony, does it surprise you that Trump has made such an effort to meet Dan Gable? I mean, from what I know is uh, he, he looks up to him. I mean, I can't imagine there's a whole lot of people that Donald Trump looks up to because, you know, he, he knows all this, and the public guy, he he's very, thinks very highly of himself. So to think this highly of Dan Gable, I think uh, that says a lot about who, the, who that man is. And to have him come to Iowa, you know, just to, to recognize wrestling in general, I think that's what it's about. I think uh, it, it's something special that, uh, you know, we need to, to try to have more of, more celebrities around that in, in the sport that aren't directly related to the sport, like a Jordan Burroughs. We know who he is. He, he's a representative of wrestling, but maybe we get some of these guys outside of wrestling that maybe wrestled in high school, junior high, to you know, come out and say what great of a sport this is, and Donald Trump is doing that. I happen to agree. It was an outstanding opportunity for two great minds to meet and spend over an hour together in Waterloo. Our thanks to Mike Doty, Kyle Klingman, and the balance of the National Wrestling Hall of Fame Dan Gable Museum for covering this event. Stay tuned. More with Hager and Casper when we return. It's Global Wrestling News. Well, last week we saw the best high school wrestlers take to the mat at the Journeyman Northeast Duels in New York and one of the biggest matches out of the night, Nick Soriano versus Vitaly Aruja. Aruja of Finger Lakes Wrestling Club came up with a big upset. Who are some of the other sleepers that we can expect at the prep level this year? Well, I wouldn't actually call him a sleeper. A lot of people are thinking that Soriano now is just like, he, he's fallen from his graces. I think uh, we saw a tweet out there that someone said that. I mean. Uh, he, he was going up a great, a great opponent. But to get to your point, to get to your question, the guys that are going to make some noise this year, I think Brody Teske from Fort Dodge, Iowa, dominated the, the 103 weight class at the 3A level in Iowa. You know, he's going to make some noise at 113 and climb those ranks. Evan and, and Xander Wick from San Marino. Love these two guys. Yeah, the twins? Love them. The twins. I mean, they've been lurking around that number five, top, top ten at their respective weight classes for the last couple of years. I mean, they, they are heavy on the recruiting trail from what I know. And uh, I think any college, I would consider that a sleeper at this point just because of where they've been at their rankings. It's going to be a steal for any college. They just got back from their final college visit from the East Coast, need I say any more? They also had some stops in the Midwest as well. We'll keep you updated on where the Wick brothers, the twins, end up committing. Speaking of Finger Lakes Wrestling Club, we'll see the Frogs take on the Titan Mercury Club, the professional wrestling league. It'll be in Las Vegas, also known as Prowl. It offers wrestlers and fans a preview of the league to come this spring. The competition takes place Friday night at the Freak Show Tournament in Las Vegas, Nevada. We talked with some of the athletes, or at least one of them anyway, on the card. Here's Titan Mercury's Andrew Hochstrasser. Um, you know, it's a great opportunity. Uh, we don't get that many opportunities to wrestle in front of uh, big crowds or especially lights like that, you know, especially after college. So it's, it's really cool to be back and uh, wrestle in front of fans and stuff like that. All right, if you can't make it to Las Vegas, we invite you to check out Titan Mercury's website at tmwc1.com for viewing information. They also have a huge sale in October, Sky. you got to get your gear now. Get it before the U.S. Open in December. It's all on sale on October. So it's Black October. Black October. Everything. I'm not for sure what they're calling it there, but uh, it's, a, it's a sale that you got can't miss. Wear what the pros are wearing. Johnny Rugen will thank you. All right, Tony, we're out of time for our executive producer, Andrew F. Barth, our producer, Wayne Boyd, and my partner here, Tony Hager. I'm Scott Casper. I'm from Studio 3B in Des Moines. We'll see you next week here on Global Wrestling News.